telling y'all it does not have to be a new year a new you it just has to be a healthier you in the new year because this new year is wild so make sure you check out tlc products life drops nutra burst okay get your vitamins help you fight off whatever you could possibly catch out there okay it is not a cure but i feel like it definitely helps especially if you're working out like myself with if you can move.com and the kiara lachey y'all check her out okay also check out all of her products get you a drip belt a waist snatcher get you the drip top like you know little tank top help you sweat even more in your arm area yes okay she has all of those things and much more check out the links down below and don't forget how cute i'll be looking in the page of mark okay cute in the page of mark get into it come on in come on in come on in not come on in not come Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Yes, this is the reunion part three, you guys. All right, please don't forget to like the video. Okay, and let's go ahead and get into it. So, the husbands come in, you guys. Um, and the question is asked to Sharif, do you value football more than you value your family? And Sharif, who is good at talking, says that, no, he does not value football more than his family. He had been there on weekdays with her father, and he was the only one that her father would respond to. So Jen kind of put the responsibility on Sharif that if he had been there more often, maybe her father would have made it. And that is not possible. So he is basically saying, oh, she's just being... So basically he was saying she's being ridiculous with the thought that I could have saved him and that, you know, that hurts her. But the truth of the matter is I've been there every day since then. I'm like, uh, we can account for four days where you wasn't even answering her phone call, Sharif, but okay. They discuss how Whitney's husband was kicked out of the church and Heather gets emotional about possibly receiving a letter from the Mormon church herself. And they discuss how Mormons don't really favor divorce. And Lisa's like, that's not true. John was divorced. My whole family, like everybody, my mom, my dad, everybody's been divorced. Basically dismissing Heather's feelings. And that's what Heather has been saying this entire time that every time you know she talks about something with her it's always this dismissive tone from Lisa and I think that's very true I definitely feel like Lisa thinks that she's better you know what I mean and she gets defensive about the Mormon church I think that's another thing as well getting so defensive that people are going to think that your church is a cult um too late but I, I just kind of feel like just because it's okay for people to get a divorce, it does not mean that the people in the church don't ostracize them for doing it, Lisa. Hello. Mary's husband is upset, okay? When I tell y'all I was so here for Mary's husband's energy, okay? I don't even remember the man's name to tell y'all the truth. <laughs> Robert Sr., is that his name? Okay. Robert Sr. was not here for it. He said he never wanted Mary to do this show because he knew eventually that someone would call Mary a grandfather effort. Jen. She says, no, we're, we're doing good in here. Okay, we're on positivity and you're coming in on negativity. And he's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna restructure myself, but I still said what I, what I said, okay? I don't appreciate the way people came at my wife, okay? And he clarifies a few things for us. He says, first of all, I was 22 when I married mama. I'm like, not mama. You're not referring to your, your deceased wife and Mary's grandmother is mama on national television, are you? Okay, fine. And then he proceeds to tell us that it's not all about money and that he loves his wife. She's a great wife and a great mother. And I'm like, but you haven't had sex in like a few years. Yeah, no, we're not going to do this, Robert Sr. Okay, yes, it does make me feel differently that you were 22 marrying the grandmother. But that still makes me feel like you did that because grandma had money. I definitely feel like Robert Sr. at 22 married a cougar-ass church lady because she could supply him with a better life. 
okay and maybe they did get those things together but he was still 22 and i feel like she had her foothold in the community in a way that probably helped his businesses you know along the way and throughout the years you know what i'm saying but when we turn around and talk about your relationship with mary your marriage to mary and her not wanting to have sex with you when you guys first got married your relationship is definitely about money your relationship is definitely about being able to acquire and keep your status in the community in which you live in. Like, get out of here with that shit. If you think we think that you and Mary got married for love, Robert Sr., you have got us completely confused with some fools, okay? Yeah, no, I don't believe for a second that you guys married out of attraction or love. You may have been attracted to her, but she was not attracted to you, and that is what she said, okay? So... I was like, whoa, 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 so you roll, Robert Sr., okay? You're not going to check us that much. But he does give Mary lots of props, especially when they question about the church. And he says that she is his equal, she is a co-pastor, and she gets so emotional when she hears him say that, you know, because it's just it's a lot. And he said that I'm his equal and I'm his co-pastor. It's just, you know, it's a lot. You know, I'm very grateful for that. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right, Mary, we got you. <laughs> We're still ignoring the fact that she's bleaching. Okay. So then Robert Sr. and Sharif have a moment where they basically make up and show how petty and immature their wives are. This is basically what they did. They were both like, yeah, man, my wife said some crazy shit and I'm apologetic about that because that was out of pocket. Sharif specifically for the grandfather fucker comment, you know, saying to Robert Sr., I told my wife she was completely out of pocket. That's not what we do. You know what I'm saying? And Robert Sr., you know, accepts that. Y'all know how men do. I feel like a lot of the times, you know, when women are like Mary and Jen, which they can be nonsensical, I don't think all women are nonsensical and the idea that we are is ridiculous because there are some men that can't get along. I can think of a few couples on 90 Day Fiance where it was like, can y'all act like y'all have some sense for a moment? But Sharif definitely made Jen look dumber. Like, girl, your own husband treats you like he's a parental figure in your life. And we already know what the situation is with Mary and Grandpa over there. It's definitely a parental situation. He may have been 22 years old when he married Mama, but he still what 18 years or so older than Mary so it does not negate the fact that you married somebody who was much older than you and therefore took a parental type of role in your life <laughs> so you and Jen have a lot in common and I think that was pointed out that you know it's a shame that they beefed out because they have so much in common but God willing, everyone is going to move forward and Jen will show that she is better than what she has showcased this past season. They talk about Whitney's dad, you guys, and this is when things get sad. You know, we were all rooting for Whitney's dad. We also found out that his hair wasn't a wig like we thought it was. It was just a terrible color. Um, here's the thing. I don't like jet black hair on anybody whose face is telling me I should be seeing patterns of gray or white somewhere. Like, your face can't be old with your hair jet black. It's just, it's too much of a stark contrast. Like, I need, I need you to gray it. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I think he's doing himself a disjustice. Like, I feel like a all white or all gray, probably all gray, all gray on, on that white man's skin tone, like in some real nice cut, probably would be a bop for him. You know what I'm saying? Something modern and chic and not like 80s like he's giving. But you know what? <laughs> some people just stay in the era that they love the most. All right. Um, I'm sad about this. Whitney said that she hasn't talked to her dad and... He hasn't been answering any of her phone calls and it sounds like he relapsed. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like he relapsed and he doesn't want to face her and that's scary. So I was really, you know, sad to hear that and everybody's hoping that Whitney's dad, you know, pulls it together. But, you know, when people are this age, like in their 50s and 60s on drugs, like still on drugs. Yeah, it kind of makes me feel like it is really going to end one or two ways either you're going to od or you're going to have health complications because of the drugs because now your body has to catch up to all the damage you've done to it um so yeah moving along y'all sad but you know i hope they're able to figure that situation out y'all meredith and her marriage with Seth. okay um i love 
the way Meredith was like, why would I discuss my marriage with any of these women? Like, <laughs> like, bitch, you gonna talk about it. It's a, it's a reunion. You gonna talk about it. Your husband is right there on video cam, bitch. You gonna talk about it. But I do love the energy of, I recognize the women in the room are not supportive of my marriage because if they were her, they would not be trying to spray me with my information. Jen. Okay. But she does say that being on the show definitely helped their marriage because it forced them to confront things in a way that they normally would not have, you know. Um, even within the friend group, I feel like they're forced to confront things, but there's still a lot of sweeping shit under the rug or no real resolve. For instance, there's no real resolve with Lisa and Heather. Lisa's a bitch. She doesn't care. And Heather is still upset about it. You know what I'm saying? There's no real resolve. Lisa doesn't feel apologetic about it. She just wants people to move on and act like it's not a problem. So in essence, I feel like that's what everybody probably does in their lives. They don't deal with issues. They just kind of keep going and push them under the rug. And this forced Meredith and Seth to deal with the issues that they had in their relationship. But they figured it out. And Seth says he realized he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing as a spouse. And we know what that means. You're so focused on your business that you get to, you know, get up and leave the household and leave Meredith taking care of the kids. And, you know, being the head of household when you're not there and her own business and then you expect her to fall into the wife position when you come home. I, you know, I, I can pretty much guess how many issues they have because of him never really being around and his main focus always being Canton, Ohio in the business. But they have worked it out. And then Lisa starts to cry about how she would have just been so distraught if they had broken up. And Heather is like, how is it that you can just be so cavalier about divorce a minute ago but now you want to sit up here and cry about the idea that Seth and Meredith could have gotten a divorce. Why do you not understand that my divorce was devastating for me and in my community and in my family? Why, could, why can't you understand that or have any sympathy or empathy towards me? And I'm like, Heather, like, honey, you're making a great point right now. This is a great example of how Lisa, you know, is a bitch to you. But we've, all, we've already covered it. We've already covered it. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. The only reason she's crying about Meredith and Seth's relationship is because of her attachment to Meredith, okay? Like, she doesn't have an attachment to you, so she doesn't care about how you feel. She doesn't care about your divorce, and she feels like you attack the Mormon church. That's the truth of the matter. She feels like you're, you know, being upset with how you've been treated since you got divorced is some stain on the Mormon religion and she has to constantly be the person to correct that. And I just, I wish she would stop because it makes her look stupid. Like you're fighting for a dead cause. At the end of the day, like everybody's entitled to have whatever spiritual beliefs that they choose to. But the way some of these churches, organized religions, put parameters on people's everyday lives. I mean, the money that y'all pay, all you can say what you want to, but the shit sounds like older Scientology. Like, it, I know the belief systems are different. But the idea of perfection, how much y'all probably pay to be a part of it, how they can send you a letter ostracizing you from the church for what you're going through in your personal life as if your church is not supposed to be a place that you run to when you go through things in your personal life. Like, yeah, <laughs> Lisa, please stop, please. It seems to me outside looking in, a lot of the, you know, Mormon tradition is toxic, just like Christianity or or Muslim or any other, you know, really structured religion that feels it can control the people that, you know, are subject to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I feel like your relationship with God really should be more centered around you and your household and your community and how you feel versus being a one size fits all based off of what somebody decided to put together for you to believe hundreds, hundreds of years before you were born or 50 years or 60 years or however many years that Mormonism has been a thing, a like hundred plus years probably. I don't know, okay, because I have not researched Mormonism. So please don't quote me. But I still feel how I feel about organized religion and what I see of it and how it can be terrible. <laughs> so we're not going to argue about that. So Jen doesn't want to discuss 
her talking about Meredith and Seth's relationship, which I thought was so convenient. They're back together. So now it's a mute point. Andy was like, no, it's not. It was a big deal on the show. And I feel like she keeps saying, I'm not coming from a bad place. And it's like, you can cry all you want to, but you went around vindictively talking about Seth and Meredith's relationship, insinuating that Meredith might be cheating on Seth or vice versa, because you were upset that you felt Meredith was not dropping Mary as a friend fast enough for you. You wanted her to be your, you know, little, little sidekick. You wanted her to stop being friends with Mary because you told her to. And because she would not do that, you decided you were going to get even with her. So every time she or Lisa aren't around, you're going to go around talking to Heather and Whitney who already kind of had their issues with Lisa and Meredith. You're going to, you know, talk to them about Meredith's relationship because you know, they aren't that close. That's why she didn't do it with Lisa, because she knows that Lisa is close with Meredith. Um, I definitely feel like Jen is smart and manipulative, and I think that she loves being the victim, even when she is the person that is doing the harm, and I don't have patience for that bullshit. Somebody needs to get this bitch a therapist three times a week. We coach uh Shaw, Coach Sharif, you're not good enough, honey. You're a coach. You're not a therapist. She needs a psychiatrist. She needs somebody to help her deal with her emotions and deal with the way she acts and have some accountability without always putting a butt behind it because that's what she did this entire reunion. And oh, as a black woman, bitch, we gonna talk about you using racism as a way to get away with being violent with those women. We're gonna talk about that. Don't worry, Whitney, you don't have to eat it that hard. <laughs> I'm going to get to it. So because Whitney and Heather both engaged in these conversations about Meredith and Seth's relationship, they both apologize, which then makes Jen feel forced to apologize. And Mary calls it out. Mary says that Jen says mean things and then she wants to take it back, but she can't. The damage is already done and you want people to act like, you know, I didn't really mean it that way, but really you were being mean and vindictive when you said it. <laughs> like you're going around burning bridges and then turning around being mad that the bridge is burnt. And it's all because she has a fight within herself. I said, Mary, bitch, you may not be able to read for yourself, but you can definitely read for the folks, okay? <laughs> Meaning, you can't never get your own shit together, but you can definitely see the problem in Jen. So they get into Jen in this Vegas trip and how she acted. And this is what I'm talking about, you guys. On this trip, not only did you have temper tantrums the way you've done in the entire season, throwing glasses, screaming in people's faces and shit, but you actually like put your hands on Heather. Like you actually like pushed her away. You forcibly got all in Whitney's face. Like you were using your physicality to threaten and bully these women. That is aggressive, bitch. It wasn't just a conversation. See, what black women talk about is people viewing us as aggressive for pointing out uh, racism or for having an opinion, you know, and standing up for ourselves. We're looked at as aggressive, especially in comparison to someone white or not black or lighter or whatever that may do the same thing and receive a different reaction. They aren't called aggressive. They aren't look like as if they're a threat and they can actually harm someone. So I don't appreciate you using that and using you being a person of color as some type of shield from the responsibility in what you did. You were aggressive. You were violent. Nobody is lying on you. Nobody is putting a sticker on your chest like, oh, because she's the Hawaiian lady, you know, because she's the, the one of color, we're going to make her look like the bad guy. No, bitch, you are the bad guy. And it doesn't matter that you're not the only one that says some messy shit. You were the only one who went around vindictively trying to stir shit about Seth and Meredith's relationship because you're mad that she wasn't bending to your will. What are you talking about, bitch? It's not the, the deep level you tried to take it to on this reunion show. You tried to make it so deep and what people have gone through and my son and Sharif and black people as a black woman, bitch, we have absolutely nothing to do with just happened up here on this stage and on this show. We ain't got nothing to do with that. We wasn't even around. We was married, bitch. We was taking a nap during this scene. Like this don't have nothing to do with black people. Don't put this on us. You acted a fool. And then people actually, to me, if they were treating you like a threat, they would have called the police or pressed charges on your ass when you put your hands on them the way you did. 
okay? Because it was completely uncalled for and you were having a temper tantrum because you couldn't get your way, which is what you do. And now you want to try to act like it's a social justice issue, bitch? How dare you? How dare you use our causes? How dare you use people dying in the street? How dare you use what our experiences have been to protect yourself from the responsibility of what you have done? How dare you? How dare you? It's a spit in all our faces, your husband, your black kids. It's a spit in their face for you to have a temp tantrum on this stage, screaming and howling to these women about how they treated you differently because you're a person of color or colored, as you like to call yourself. Please stop, Jen. Please stop. Heather brings up how you got online and called me Shrek, bitch. Like, I'm your friend. And you got online and talk bad about me, said I buy shit off the rack. Well, we all know Heather probably has more money than Jen. <laughs> so Heather and Jen go back and forth. Mary is falling asleep. And when she wakes up, she says that she believes that Jen definitely took a dig at Heather in Vegas. You were mad that you felt like Heather, Heather didn't take your side over Whitney, even though you made it seem as if your issue with Whitney was over. Um, you're mad and you even said it. You were like, you need to be defending me to Whitney, bitch. Like, that's what you said to Heather. And because Heather wasn't about to like sit there and swallow that shit and she told you about yourself, okay, you were mad. And then you wanted to take a dig at her and say you didn't trust her when y'all went and talked, you know, to the lady or whatever. You're not putting the, pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. Um, what I do feel like is because Mary is a black woman in this situation and recognizes how, you know, there is a white privilege in the room. You know what I'm saying? There is definitely that. And living in Salt Lake City, I'm sure they're always experiencing some little forms of, and not even little, but experiencing racism. I'm sure, which is why they feel the need to appear lighter because they're trying to blend in so people will stop fucking with them or treating them bad. I, I know what's going on here, Mary. Okay, I'm aware, but the truth of the matter is this situation with Jen had absolutely nothing to do with her being a, a person of color and everything to do with her being a psycho that feels entitled to have temper tantrums when she doesn't get her way, when she can't bully her friends into doing what she wants them to do as if they're some middle schoolers or some shit on the playground. She storms off the stage at some point. You don't know what this is like. You don't know because you don't have to deal with this and all of that shit. I said, bitch, you don't really know neither, but okay. I'm not going to, you know, because I don't know what her experience was like growing up in Salt Lake City, but I'm still going to say you don't know what it's like to be a black woman. So I would really like for you to stop doing that shit. But Mary made a point that it's in, it's in, she said it's in breaded. <laughs> I think that's a testament to I'm not the only one that peeped that Heather's husband and, and their family, you know, probably got a lot of money because they've been fucking family members for years to keep the money in their family. But Heather made a good point. If you think I'm treating you differently because you're a person of color and you're my friend, have a conversation with me. Don't spray me on the internet. And I agree with Heather. And I also, listen, I've already pointed out the pioneer bullshit and all of that stuff. Like, you know, fucking slave owners. Like, as long as I'm concerned, y'all colonizers. Like, get out of here with that shit. Okay? I've already discussed that from day one. But I will not sit here and act like I feel like Heather treated Jen worse because she's a person of color if anything they let you get away with so much shit it's amazing to me and if you were a black woman they would not have allowed you to get away with this much shit they would probably have due to you what they did to mary which is not tape with you at all not to say that they actively did that but all they would have to do is not really tape with you and, and what would happen you would be a sideline character like they did the one black woman on this show mary the show has been all about you every episode, bitch. When she goes backstage to cry into Sharif's shoulder and he says some people are just not going to understand it. Heather is not one of those people. Whitney is on the... I, I'm just saying, I don't think that this is what's going on with Heather. Um, I think all, all white people are racist at a certain level because they live in this system. Don't get me wrong. Not to say that you actively feel like you hate somebody, but I do think it is a underlying bias that you have because this is what you've been taught. This is the world that you live in. And so you have to make like active conscious efforts to not be that. <laughs> like it's it's very simple to me. Um, you know, because I, I noticed the same thing with colorism. I made an effort in a conscious effort to change the way I felt like society was trying to make me think about skin tone. Okay? 
Um, so I feel like with white people, y'all just like to act like, you know, you have, you don't have any self-responsibility in this. Oh, teach me, show me, tell me. No, bitch, figure it out for yourself. Have some self-awareness. Read a book, bitch. I don't know. Watch a Malcolm X movie. Watch a Martin Luther King movie. There are so, there's a plethora of places for white people to learn about tolerance and what our experience has been in this country and the microaggressions. There are a plethora of bodies of work in order for you to learn about this, yet you still want to be able to be ignorant of it and then act like nobody told you. No, I'm not doing that with y'all. And that is bullshit. Everybody has to self-check, okay? So do, do me a favor, white people, self-check. Self Stop expecting black people to have to tell you when you fucking up or explain to you when you're doing it. Self-check the way we've always had to self-check in your presence. The way we've had to switch, code switch, and, and talk a certain way to make you feel comfortable. Now you need to be doing shit to make us feel comfortable. And no, you don't get to get upset and frustrated about it. Oh, I'm so tired of this. Bitch, you think it's been like 400 plus years. You think we not tired? You think? Okay? So yeah, self-check yourself at the end of the day. But Whitney, when she said, I don't know how I'm going to swallow this. Whitney, you shouldn't have had to, to tell you the truth. And when Mary says she does get that feel from Heather and Whitney that they feel like they're better than people of color or better than black people, that's upsetting to me because y'all are like, you know, two people that I actually like on the show. I don't know if that's true, but when Mary said it, I believed it. So that's upsetting to me, to be honest with you. But at the, at the same time, Whitney, truth is truth. And the fact of the matter is the bitch did threaten to kill you and did jump in your face. <laughs> you didn't call the cops on her. So you obviously don't think she would actually do it. But I'm trying to understand how Whitney was ever treated differently by, you know, uh, how Whitney treated Jen differently, how Heather treated Jen. No, talking about they called you aggressive. You were aggressive. You were physical. You were getting in people's faces. That is aggression, bitch. What's wrong with you? Like, you don't get to act like somebody's labeling you aggressive because you're, you know, a person of color when you're actually being aggressive. When Jen finally came back after talking to Sharif, they eat a meatball in the middle, you know, and they meet in the middle and everybody's cool now. And then it snows and then Mary tries to eat the snow. <sighs> I'm, I'm over Jen. I do feel like Jen was trying to make this a moment. And for anybody, you know, with sense, this was just ridiculous. <laughs> this was just ridiculous. I mean, she just did. To me, it was annoying because I was like, you sat there and act like you had sense this whole reunion. And then we get to the end. And you do this. You use the Black Lives Matter movement. You use racial injustice and the microaggressions and, and all of the, you know, the white privilege and the situations that we are put in when we are in white spaces. You use all of that to make yourself look like the victim because you don't want to deal with the fact that you were fucked up this season. You were. You did a lot of messed up stuff and you don't want to be held accountable for that. You don't want to admit that. It's I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but I never meant bullshit. You meant exactly what you were doing. You were being vindictive and you trying to make it seem like you're not a bad person, you know, because I didn't mean it that way. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. And I love when Meredith said, if I had done to you what you did to me, would you think I was loyal? And she was like, no. And she was like, exactly. So stop thinking that you're this loyal, great person, you know, when you're not, bitch, you're not loyal. You're not a great person. You're a shitty friend. You're selfish. You make everything about you. And then when people call you on it, you play victim and use the race card. Y'all, I never say that black people use the race card. That's not something I ever like to throw out there. I don't even like to say people of color do that. But this bitch is doing it right now. Because this, this, this is not that. <laughs> okay? I've talked long enough, y'all. That was Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I hope y'all enjoy. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.